All right, we're recorded. Good afternoon slash good evening, everybody. It's just for uh, the timeless piece. It's what about just nearly quarter past six on Sunday, 21 degrees outside, and we're all here dedicated to listen to all things finance uh, when it comes to Toastmasters. So my name is Brad Ravel. Um, I've been a Toastmaster for quite a while all around the world, and Violet and I have spent a fair bit of time putting together a presentation to overview all things Toastmasters Finance. We like to call it freaking phenomenal finance because um, finance is cool. You may not agree, but it is quite cool. And we want to make sure that the, uh, well, the aim of this presentation is really to provide uh, members of the district, especially treasurers and anyone focusing on finance, could be presidents and other uh, committee members or even members in general, get a better idea of what finance means and when it comes to managing clubs and hopefully some ideas, tips and tricks to you know, managing your clubs in a better way. We believe that finance is absolutely key, especially given the environment uh, that we're in. This, this presentation has both a timely and a timeless approach to it. And what I mean by that is that you can look at this presentation in two, three years time, it'll be relevant. But I also think there's an aspect of timeliness given what's going on with the COVID pandemic. So what do treasurers need to think about? What do presidents need to think about? And other committee members when it comes to finance on managing their clubs given uh, what's going on. So with that, I uh, this shouldn't take an, a too much amount of time. We allocated about an hour. We've, we're running a bit late because of um, just waiting for people to join, but feel free to ask questions. Um, you can unmute. I will try and keep an eye on the right hand side. I have my cameras and whatnot going on, uh, but yeah, feel free to ask questions. Only a small group and I hope you get a lot out of it. So let's get going. What we wanted to do when we started this uh, discussion was anchor the conversation on the club mission. And I don't know if everybody remembers what the club mission is. It's something we read maybe once or twice or three times every so often, or we get reminded about it when it comes to district get togethers, but it's really important to anchor ourselves into what the club mission is. And I won't read out to, to all of it, I should say, but really we're providing an environment uh, for our members to learn and grow give them opportunity to develop skills, right? And then foster confidence and, and, and growth in what they do within the club. And I highlighted these three words. So an environment is one, opportunity is another and foster. And what's interesting about those three words is they're, they're really much action words, but without finance being involved, none of these things can actually happen. You can't have an environment without paying for a room or paying potentially for uh, an environment online as we're talking, although we're using the club, uh, the district, I should say, the district's Zoom conference capabilities. That way, no members will get that opportunity to speak, to get to lead. So these things really come and are fostered by uh, the club finance that we do. And that comes from dues from our members and obviously the facilities and capabilities that you know, Toastmasters International provide as well. So I think when we think about finance, we really got to look back at the mission and something we don't do as often as we should, uh, but it's always nice to come back and start from this place uh, as, as a starting point and then move forward. So when we have our angle and our lens in the right place, then we can start to focus on what that really means. So I'm a, I'm a big believer of uh, looking, looking at different things in, in three different lenses here. So we've got really the who, so who is the treasurer? Uh, what does a treasurer do? What is he or she responsible, accountable for? Um, and there's there's the Toastmasters view that you'll find in your club uh, handbook, the, you know, the handbooks that you're given out every year when you become a committee member. Um, but, you know, why, why are you uh, a treasurer? What is the role you're supposed to provide above and beyond what's in that manual? And that's something I think we'll touch on a little bit more in this presentation. And then the last one is really the how. And what, you'll, what we've tried to do in this, uh, in this session today is we'll talk about the who and the why, and then what Violet has done is put together some of the how as well. So what we want you to be able to do is not have to start from scratch, but to leverage some of the tools and techniques that come together. So have a look at maybe a break-even type of spreadsheet to look at your costs in the club today and how are you managing your finances and have some tools to move away from just being an accountant, so to speak, to more like a 
if I can coin the term like a CFO for the club, like a chief financial officer, doing that analysis to say, well, we have some surplus in our budget. What can we do to enhance you know, our club's environment or fostering um, you know, additional growth in our members? So that's what we're going to do with the how. So we look at the who first. Let's look at the definition of the treasurer. And I, again, I want to anchor it again as the, uh, the foundation of what Toastmasters International look at a, a treasurer. So the key tasks, the three real key tasks here. So there's overseeing accounts. So making sure, you know, the, balance, the budget balances, everyone's paying, um, the, all the fees are going out where they need to go to Toastmasters International for, for the, uh, the location that you're having, any other additional uh, transactions that are going in there. Collecting dues, we do that two, two times a year. And that's obviously a big one. And this is all the usual things. Then obviously paying bills, any of the variable costs. So you have your fixed costs, your variable costs you look at that from a financial standpoint but then that's the task but what are the key focus areas and we identified really three things for a treasurer to focus on so one is the meeting are you able to facilitate the funds to allow a meeting to happen every two weeks or two times a month or weekly however is your your club structured uh, but then above and beyond that what about outside the club meeting what are you facilitating from a social standpoint what are you doing for your club members above and beyond the actual meeting themselves? And a lot of clubs have various different ideas, but those dues that your members are paying, part of that goes to Toastmasters International, part of that goes to the district, and part of that um, is for you to manage and how do you interact with your members. And the last, the last area of focus is the executive committee. And let me define that really quickly. The executive committee is really the committee uh, of your club and that meeting that you get together to make sure that you all agree on what that club success plan looks like, how you're going to execute that club success plan, and how does that relate to the financials aspect for you as a treasurer or even as a, as a president, keeping an eye on numbers as well. And we're going to make sure there's a lot of, I like to use the word cross-pollination of what's going on within the club. So no one person is isolated to what they are doing. Everybody's interacting and knowing. And you'll see what I mean by that as we talk through. So let's look at the, uh, the why a little bit. So we talked about the mission and we believe that the treasurer and or the, anyone managing club finances plays a really critical role. Uh, and, and I talked about that. Let's work through from top to bottom and then left to right. So we talk about more than just finance. And I want to emphasize here that what I've found in my experience at Toastmasters, and I've been a Toastmaster for quite some time, that people find the treasurer role just to be a tick box exercise. Um, and sure, that's a really important role. We want to make sure that we have enough surplus in the budget, not too much, obviously, as per the rules from Toastmasters International, but we want to be able to balance the books. We need to report an account to the executive committee. We need to be able to go back to the AGM, the annual general meeting that we hold for the, for the club, you know, at least once a year to say, here's what the finances look like. Here's where your money is going towards and here's how we're fostering that environment and allowing our members to grow as uh, as public speakers and as leaders uh, so that's really important but what are some of the additional analysis and and work that you can do above and beyond to help allocate those funds or manage those funds in a better way so i want you to think above and beyond just the key tasks that you have to do that are outlined in the club success plan in your um and your role, what is, what is it you can do and use those finances in a better way? And we'll talk a little bit about the economic factors, the bottom one in a second. The other thing we're big believers on is the, the aspect of hygiene. So hygiene is really defined on making sure you're doing the key things day in and day out or week in and week out as a treasurer, just making sure that you're downloading the statements, everything reconciles, that the payments are on time, you're submitting dues, all of the key factors. And I'm not gonna go into those in too much detail today, because they're outlined in your role in, in the manual that you get. Again, these are now distributed online. They used to be distributed physically. But going online and just searching for a club treasurer, you'll see all the key tasks, what you need to do, when you need to do it, and sometimes how you need to do it, not necessarily always in detail. Uh, but that way you can plan in advance to make sure that you're letting the president know or sergeant at arms or anyone else that may want to do marketing, could be your VPPR, that they know what they need to do when interacting with you. And it could be like getting bank accounts set up when you're transitioning, switching across those bank accounts. Uh, so there's a nice smooth movement as you're going forward. So you can identify those things by just being hygienic as a, as a treasurer and as a club. Looking at driving growth. 
uh, that's really important when it comes to being a, being a uh, treasurer. So how are you allocating funds to do marketing potentially? We've got a lot of initiatives within the district that you can run to do, uh, uh, to do those um, open houses. I was thinking about for just a second. So how do you do open houses? The district actually allocates funds for these, for these events. You can do that. So you can leverage the funds that the district allocate. Violet, I, you'll have to remind me how much that is now. Is it still 50 pounds or is it 90 pounds? And I know you're on mute. Um, it's a hundred pounds, but and that can be claimed by your area director. So they have, you know, if you speak to your area director, they can get the money for you for open house. Right. Yeah. So there you go. Not a hundred pounds. So you don't have to take that out of your club's budget. You want to run an open house, just leverage the district funds that you're paying for anyway, but you're getting that money back. So it's kind of, I like to use the term gift that gives back. So you're leveraging that driving growth. So again, this is not looking, isolating at your own club, but looking above and beyond of what are some of the initiatives that you can use. Again, the pizza night's another one. If you get your member growth up to a certain level, then the, the district will pay for a, a pizza night. Some people love pizza, some people don't. I'm not the best, biggest pizza fan, but again, depending on what your members are like, you can do things to drive additional growth in the way your club's getting managed. So a few others, uh, club excellence. I, I find that there's, there's not enough focus on the finance uh, aspect of, of, the, uh, of the club and the committee role. So if you want to be an excellent club, it all starts with the finance. Without the money, you can't have, the, like I said, you can't have the environment, you can't foster that growth and, and leadership and opportunity that your members will get. So remember, that's where it starts. And you as treasurers, if you're playing that treasurer role, you play a big role in that. And furthermore, uh, any other role that interacts with the treasurer to make sure that you can use those funds in the right way. Last two is uh, value. Uh, I think that's an important one that people don't think about, especially when it comes to AGMs. You know, so, some members just focus on going into the meetings, but there's other members that say, well, where is my money going? When I spend X amount of pounds per year or per six months, depending on when you're renewing, where is that money getting allocated? So you need to make sure that members are getting value. And again, you need to understand, well, okay, here's the allocation of funds. There's fixed costs, there's variable costs but reporting that back to the president, reporting that back to your members to make sure that they know how things are getting allocated. It doesn't have to be a good or bad thing, it's just feedback that you may get from your members on voting on where that money should be allocated and you have a number of initiatives that you can leverage there. The last one's an interesting one and we'll touch on this a little bit today, economic factors. And what's fascinating about this, this particular uh, slide that we're showing is that we wrote this back in January before this COVID, uh, COVID pandemic was uh, impacting on the United Kingdom. This is one of those scenarios that happens, right? So you may have an increase of cost when it comes to your hotel or the location that you're, you're hiring for the club meetings that happen two times a month or every other week. Um, how do you account for that? So I think you need to do planning and understanding what's, uh, what's going to go on in the environment just in case things change. But here we are in an environment now where you don't necessarily need a location because no one's allowed to go outside of their houses more than just doing exercise. So then how do you allocate those funds? Can they go into something a little bit different? Are you going to reduce your dues with your members? Do they, will they come back and say, well, hang on, if we don't have a location, then you should be reducing the amount of money that I should be spending as part of the renewals. There's no one right answer, but it's something that maybe you'll have some questions about today that we can hopefully answer. I have a big concern when it comes to economic factors because it just doesn't impact on you as the treasurers in terms of managing your finance, it could be positive or negative, but what about renewals of, of Toastmasters? This couldn't be a worse time for renewals period when people are struggling to make ends meet because they may have been made redundant. So what can you do as treasurers to maybe manage the finances differently to say, okay, look, let's Let's provide a different option for our members so you continue to be members maybe for the next six months as we go through this crisis, but allow them to still access the resources and still be members because people still need to uh, maintain their personal growth and professional growth so they can continue to, to work and find, uh, find work and get jobs. Um, the, the treasurer can really play a role in that. Again, there's no real right answer but that's one thing in terms of economic factors we really need to think about there. So maybe if you have some questions at the end or during, please ask them because we want to make sure that we're supporting all of our members, right? That's what 
we are as, a, as an organization. We are here to make sure our members grow and develop and this is a tough time for them. So there are the six areas in terms of what we've identified as the why, why are you here? And again, there's the most, most treasures that I've seen and even when I was a treasurer, never focused on, the, on, on all these six areas. But as you learn and grow and experience different things, and work with Violet, who's uh, Mrs. Finance. She learn a lot more about financial stuff, and she's on mute. So she's not gonna, she's not gonna laugh at me. <laughs> All right. We also made some assumptions on uh, on this this particular presentation um, when it comes to club finance. It's really important because we can make this a two or three hour session, but we wanted to make it jam packed. So we're just focusing on the key things here. So let's talk about these assumptions. So we didn't want to go through a presentation and talk about you know, a club going through the chartering process because it's very different to a club that's normally being managed. Now, the second one is a little bit harder now given where we're at in the environment, the financials environment, that the club is in good financial health. But we can talk about that a little bit and I have done just then. I also want to assume that she's getting paid on time. So again, the treasurer plays a huge role in making sure that you're managing that, you know, maybe four to six weeks in advance so that, that the members are actually submitting them on time. There's also an aspect of community club. And the reason we put community club in there is because corporate clubs work a little bit differently. Uh, they're hosting, and the assumption is they're typically hosting the environment. So the big cost of location is minim minimized or eliminated totally. But community clubs have to host a location. So there's an additional cost they need to pay. Uh, when it comes to managing budgets, you do typically know what your fixed costs are. Sometimes they do change, and we talked about location as well. Uh, but um, knowing those fixed costs is really important so you can, uh, you can run your um, break-even spreadsheet, which Violet will talk about a little bit later, in order to make sure that, okay, I know that with all the members that we have, whether it's 20, 25, 30, or, or even above, that the club can break even and that we're making a little bit of a surplus, but not too much of a surplus. And the last one was around election cycles. So typically with a 12 month election cycle, some clubs run a six month, uh, that, that does happen, but it, it gives the treasurer an opportunity to really understand the role. And you'll hear me say this a little bit later, you have an important role to play and I've emphasized that multiple times, but remember you get something out of this as well. I'm getting involved in finance because I wanna be better at learning about finance so I can apply that in my day job. So that's the, the reason, the personal reason I'm doing it, but I also like to give back and contribute to the district, which I have done for many years now. So keep that in mind as we go through that. So on the flip side, ex exclusions, foreign exchange, it's very hard to deal with that. Uh, you know, the, the environment we're in as well, what if, what if, X, if FX changes, excuse me, um, we're excluding the six month election cycle. Uh, the last one is, is the club has an excess fund, uh, surplus of funds. There is a new district, uh, even Toastmasters International rule, that says that you need to keep your surplus at a certain amount. So if you're not using your surplus, there's, there's things you can do, maybe running some type of uh, events or buying some additional uh, collateral for the club to keep your surplus down. Uh, so that's something you need to keep in mind. All right, so let's go into the hygiene in a little bit more detail. We'll go through these in a little bit faster fashion. Uh, so we've got some opportunities for, uh, for uh, questions. Uh, I think we're doing relatively well for time. I, what I might do is just quickly pause. Is there any questions that anyone has so far? Let's pause for a few seconds while I get a swig of water. Yeah, so Tony, yeah, please unmute and ask some questions. Okay, um, I think it's mainly in connection with our surplus of funds. We do have quite a healthy surplus at the moment. It's uh, well over 2,000. Um, I mean, um, uh, normally had we not been so far advanced in the renewals uh, period, we would have uh, been looked at to reduce our fees. But um, I mean, quite a lot of our members had actually renewed early at the at our standard rate, which is at seventy-two pounds for six months. So I didn't feel like we could make any changes to our um, our membership fees when at least half our members had already renewed at the original. It would just have made it too complicated. Mm -hmm. um, so my thoughts are: I know the renewals period has been extended now until the thirtieth of April. So uh, my thoughts were wait until about the middle of May and then either look at giving every mem every rejoined member a refund or alternatively give them a, a, sort of like a credit which would be used for the next renewal period starting 1st of October. 
Um, mm. So I was, I was wondering if you had any thoughts on that, Brad. Yeah, I'll I'll I'll, uh, I'll answer that, and then I'll let Violet um, contribute as well because she's certainly got a wealth of information. I think that sounds like a uh, a very good option. I, I I'll let Violet talk about what the restrictions are because I don't know off what they are off offhand, but I know there's some there's some restrictions in there. But I think there's something to be said about. You know, I'm going to be open and honest. I think there's going to be a lot of hurt in our economy going forward, and ability for people to be able to pay for Toastmasters is it's one of those, let's say, discretionary costs that you'll cut up front. I feel that our district is going to see renewals drop significantly. It is what it is, right? Mm. Um, so anything you can do to support your members, I mean, that's what we are, we're a community. Uh, I think that sounds like a, sounds like a really good idea. Um, I mean, if you've got online capabilities using Zoom, like we are now, I know we have a corporate, more of a, I think, subscription account, um, but there's also other, other things you can do maybe online that you can leverage for free. That's great for giving the people to opportunities to continue to develop because they're going to need that to you know, be viable in the new market. So that, that's my, that's probably my, my couple of comments. Violet, did you have anything you want to add? Especially when yes. Just, yeah. 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 Again, it depends on um, how, if you've already paid Toastmasters International or not, because Toastmasters International normally will not refund any fees. So if, so you've paid the $45 for the six months and then you refund the member, it's being mindful that actually the club can still cover its cost and you're not leaving the club out of pocket. So it's working out the numbers that knowing at the back of your mind that t t t Toastmasters International fees don't get refunded. Yes. So it's not good having the surplus, but it's also again bearing in mind that that portion of fees that goes to Toastmasters International won't come back. But then second as well, I think yeah, it's it's a good way you know to let members know you know th that their finances are being looked after. And I think rather than automatically give a refund, why not do a survey? Because members might be happy to reinvest the money into a workshop rather than putting it back in their pockets because they've already spent it. But of course, everyone's circumstances are different. Yes. I'll do a survey rather than, you know, look at it as an option one refund because there are other ways to help members grow. And, you know, during this time, they might be, you know, happy to do other, you know, workshops or anything else. Yes. I mean, I think the strange thing is that I'm not aware that any of our members said they had difficulty uh, with the renewals. I mean, I think we, at the beginning of the New York period, we had 51 members and up to date, we've had 29 have renewed. Um, I mean, nobody complained, nobody said they had a problem with the fees. Um, there's a few more that we've spoken to who are going to renew. I think we're probably going to end up with about 35 members. Yeah. But I'm still not aware that anybody has a problem with the fees as such. Yeah. So. Uh, Reinvest, reinvest it back in the members because they, they, they're always other things that the money can be used for rather than, you know, you know, it's just thinking outside the box. Could you do a workshop? Could you buy, you know, resources, anything, you know? Yeah, but I think, I mean, I think it, obviously at the moment when we can't have any live workshops, it's all on Zoom. Um, I'm not quite sure how we would, how we would do that. So and as I said, I was thinking of instead of giving a refund, like giving everybody a credit were well, like uh, money off for the next renewal period starting October the 1st, mm -hmm. maybe. And then yeah. al also then reduce our fees at the same time um, for the next renewal period. Do you think that might be an idea? Yeah, like as, as, as long as you're breaking even for your Toastmasters fees to Toastmasters International, then I don't see why not. As long as you can still, you can still pay the dues to Toastmasters International and cover oh, yeah. the oh, minimum easily. cost. Yeah. yeah, I mean, as you said, Toastmasters International charges $45, where we charge our members, well, £72, which is yeah. I don't know, it's probably about $100. So we charge our members about double of what we pay to Toastmasters. Yeah, so you'll see you'll see in, in there, Tony, a uh, spreadsheet, this break even spreadsheet, which I think will be really useful because what you can do is you put your fixed costs and your variable costs in there and say, okay, how, how much is that getting allocated where? And then you can say, well, because we're not paying for a location, we can take that cost down knowing that at least in the next couple of months, you're never going to have to pay that. And then I think Viola said something uh, said as well, and maybe there's an opportunity if you do some sort of either survey or annual general meeting and say, oh, look, everybody, you know, I know things are tough. Uh, we've got a survey out here. How would you like to allocate the funds? Because your surplus is quite high anyway. To have you know, 2,000 pounds surplus is, is quite high. It's great. So that's a nice 
moat, if I can, uh, I'll use that term, yeah. a moat for you guys at the moment. So, um, and who knows is what, I don't think anyone really knows exactly how this is all going to play out. So Nobody um, knows. making sure that you have enough in the, in the, in the piggy bank yeah. for a little while and, and then you can uh, work out what else you can do just to help support the members. I like the idea of having a survey. Um, are you there, Isabel? Can you think of any more questions about um, finance or membership fees? Um, I was going to say just to add as well to that, let's not forget at the end of the day, it's members' money. So it's not the, the committee that decides what to do with the money. It's actually members to decide. So as a committee, you can come up with the ideas, but the ultimate final decision is down to the members. So that's, yeah. a, that's another thing to be mindful of. Yeah, no, that's, yeah, that's a, a very valid point. Well, let's let's keep going. Isabel, did you have any questions, or or, or uh, I can always open it up at the end. You're good at the moment. Good at the moment, thank you. Okay, cool. All right. Well, let's keep going. We've got plenty of opportunity to have questions uh, further down the track. So, so I talked about hygiene before. Uh, here's a few things. You know, this is kind of one on one stuff. But remembering that we have treasurers coming through new every year. So I wanted to at least put out some of the key things sh people should be thinking about. So when it comes to hygiene, when you're opening accounts, one of the most difficult things and arduous things that we go through as uh, club committee members, uh, especially treasurers and presidents, are having two people uh, on the signatories. So there, there are some banks that make it a little bit easier, some banks that make it harder. I know some, some have uh, opened at HSBC, some have opened at Barclays, had a bit of easier type of opportunity there. But um, please open a, a, not a personal account, but use the club bank account so then you can reconcile even as a Division B director, we were using um, club accounts to make sure we accounted for the monies that were being brought in from the division conferences and that would get reallocated out to the division again at the next conference. So we're always very, um, very transparent when it comes to things like that. So that's really important. And I, I, we're going to try and develop a little bit more of a, of a workflow on how best to approach opening bank accounts and managing the signatory changes because it's a very difficult process at the moment. Uh, submitting dues early. Uh, I don't know if you've had that experience, but when it comes to the end of the period, the renewal period, sometimes Toastmasters International, the website is slow and uh, a little bit degraded. So uh, getting that in early and, and getting that on time. And this, I know, Tony, you were saying that your club has done pretty well with the renewals, which is great. And that kind of leads into the next one is submitting um, members and renewals as early as possible. The one thing about submitting new members, ASAP, the reason we say that is as soon as they're submitted, they get access to Pathways and, uh, and Toastmaster.org. So that's really important for, for members. I think one of the first impressions we want to be able to do is let them hit the ground running. And you can only do that if they have access to the educational system. I've seen some clubs that take such a long time, you, you lose that, that energy that the club members have to begin with get them access to the materials, see what their membership dues are actually providing them so they can hit the ground running. Uh, we kind of touched on this before, but we talked about having at least six months worth of, uh, worth of fixed costs covered in the bank. You know, some clubs have that, some clubs don't. I, I was a member of a club that uh, was really struggling at one point with, with fixed costs and we moved locations to alleviate that issue somewhat. And that's uh, put us in a better position. We had a low membership count. So that's where this break even becomes really important. So you know your number of members, you know your cost, then you can start to forecast exactly how much money you have at the bank, and then you can then adjust what your membership due should be in more of an automated fashion, so you're not reinventing the wheel. All right, and then collecting dues, if you can, try and do them in, in, uh, in 12 month increments. It's sometimes tough with people, and we totally get that, and you can do that in the six month period as well. But if you can get them signing up for 12 months, that's much better for you, it gives you more flexibility into the future. And obviously, you still need to submit them in uh, six months. Sorry, was there a question? Oh, we're still good. Yep. Okay. Cool. I saw I saw a hand move, and I'm looking to the right hand side of my screen. My screen's a little bit big. So, <laughs> all right, let's keep going. I brought this down into two sections. So then, the uh, part two. One of the things we recommend you do as well is starting that renewal process in a six month, uh, six weeks prior to that closeout date. I know that renewals extended for obvious reasons. But uh, please try and start that early. There's only two times a year. I've got a uh, next slide will show you a nice visual of what some of the key tasks you should be doing as a treasurer or even as a club executive committee member. But one of them is, is starting these things in advance, just getting the emails out there. And one of the things I've learned with Toastmasters, 
I don't ever need to reinvent the wheel. All I need to do is search for something on Google or DuckDuckGo, whatever your search preference is, and someone's already done it. And you just need to leverage that, reword it, adjust it, and then send it out to your club. So if you've got an email that you need to ask your members to renew, just do a search, the email's there, you just reword it the way you want, send it out, and that's all done. So that's the first one. Second one, agree venue and other fixed costs as far out as possible. So yeah, that's a really good one. So that means you can kind of keep a nice runway of like, this is how much my costs are going to be. And that way you can, you can forecast exactly where your bank account surplus is going to be in your budget, against your budget. Uh, one of the things I did with my club, and again, just ideas, is working with other clubs to use the venue and then use a bit more purchasing power to say, well, hang, hang on, there's two clubs that are going to meet here on you know every other week. Can we pull together and you bring our fees down a little bit? So just being a little bit more flexible with location. We're all about uh, being conservative as finance, uh, financial people, treasurers, so make sure you're conservative. Um, have a little bit of uh, extra in there just in case. Uh, have a club committee, uh, club audit committee in place to make sure that you're ordering, auditing, excuse me, uh, what are you doing with the club finances? Uh, and then report that as an AGM. There's many clubs do not, not do proper annual general meetings. So if you need more information about that, we can help you. It is in some of the manuals but you really should be running an annual general meeting. Uh, to Violet's point before, Tony, you've got some ideas, survey that out, agree as a committee, but then present that back to the club members because they're the ones paying the money. And then always keep records. And the cool thing about this is technology really allows you to do that in a very easy way. And we'll show you some spreadsheet costs. So the hygienes, let's uh, switch a little bit. This is a, a fairly busy image here. But let's work again, uh, a year in review, and it starts in July, finishes at the end of June. Uh, we'll work uh, across from left to right, obviously month by month. And I'll use my mouse here so you can follow what I'm doing. So let's talk about some of the bigger, bigger periods that go on throughout the year. So we have two club officer trainings. So the first one's the first uh, couple of months, and we have another one that's uh, gonna start at the end of the year. We also have renewal periods. Again, this is not accurate based off the renewal periods at the moment, uh, given the extended period that's going on for COVID. And then there's an updated signatories uh, area here. So they're kind of the th five big uh, big events or timelines that happen throughout the uh, Toastmasters year. We are on the Toastmasters year from July. Then there's a number of different tasks that you, you, uh, you have to go through. So we've got start of year tasks. Now, you can argue that uh, all clubs should be doing the club success plan. And, and then one of the big parts of that club success plan is the finances, right? So creating initial budget, looking at your previous year, how were you with costs? What do you need to do differently? What are some of the initiatives that are going to be in place that you need to account for as part of your budget? Uh, what are some of the ideas from the members? Are you surveying how the membership dues are working? Can you lower them? Can you increase them? All these things can go into that club success plan and initial budget. Uh, obviously, you need to get the executive committee sign off to make sure everyone's on the same page and agree based off what the VPPR wants to do from a marketing standpoint, maybe membership drives from the VPM. Sergeant Arm says, we need to update the equipment. We need to get a better location. All of these costs need to be accounted for. And establishing the club p &L. Now, if it's a new club, you may not have that capability all in place and ready to go. But if it is an existing club, that should already be in place. So they're all the start of the year things, getting together as a committee. If there are presidents of, on this uh, call, the presidents should be really driving to make sure all these things are getting in place. So you're kicking off the year in a positive way and, and looking into the future again to assign and align to that club mission. All right, so then you send your due statement that happens around mid-August. That's uh, part of that renewals period that's happening. So sending your due statement and then ensuring that the dues are collected by the end of October and submitted to Toastmasters International at the appropriate time. Okay, so they're the key kind of dates in the first part of the year. Now, we added in here a mid-year review. All right, so how's your budgets versus your actuals going? What's the comparison? Do you need to adjust? Um, what does it mean for your club dues? Is there a surplus? What do you need to change? There's also a committee review. You should be doing more regular committee reviews, but if you're not, please try and do one mid-year just to make sure that everybody's on the same page. You're hitting the targets that you actually had forecast at the start of the year, and if they're not, they need to be adjusted and making sure that you're still gonna have that surplus. You're not gonna go into the red, you're gonna stay in the black. 
get to February, March, submitting due statements again, and then going through the membership dues. Again, that's a little bit later this year uh, for obvious reasons. And then last but not least, even, even though we put succession planning at the last part of the year here, we're saying here, please, 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 please do that much earlier. When it comes to updating signatories and other things, you wanna try and do that earlier in the year so it's not last minute and you can get it done in a very, a very much more efficient and effective way. So this is all outlined in the manuals that are provided to you at the start of the year, but it's much more of a nice visual view, which you can take a screenshot of. We'll also send these out to you so you have them as well. Uh, but it gives you a nice idea that when you start making sure you're covering off various key aspects throughout the year, so you're not waiting to the last minute, being a little bit more proactive than reactive. Then the last thing we said, well, what else? What else would you want to do? Well, okay, supporting the uh, executive committee. What are some of the things as a CFO versus just the treasurer would do to support the club? You know, are there different initiatives that your new executive committee are looking to do? Can you say, well, look, as Tony, you said before, we've got a huge surplus. What can we do for our members to help foster that environment or help them through the uh, current climate that we're dealing with? So these are some of the things you can focus on. Uh, open house financial planning. Remember that hundred pounds, you can leverage that without having to tap into your budget or your bank accounts. And this understanding the climate of the members. This is really important, obviously, today, given renewals. All right, interactions. We'll fly through this a little bit faster given where we're at with time. Uh, but what we wanted to do is make sure that whatever it comes to do with finance, we wanted to touch on each particular role and how that, that impacts on the finances and impacts on the treasurer role. So the, the president is really accountable for the financial health. You're responsible as a treasurer, but the, the president's really accountable. So they need to be visible of what's going on. They've got an opportunity at every meeting to talk about the key messages, and that might be about finance. What are some of the key financial things that are going on? Maybe moving location, maybe changing dues, you need to submit your dues. Um, we may reduce dues because of COVID. All these things the president can announce, he or she can announce as part of every meeting. They're an escalation point for the treasurer. If there's an issue, talk to the president first. You have area directors, you have Violet, you have me, you have other people, they should be the first point of call. VPE, Vice President of Education. They're printing agendas, getting manuals, they're paying for contest costs, cot costs, extra meetings. So there's a lot of things that can impact on the budget. So knowing what those are in advance so that you can account for them in the budget for the year. These are the variable costs typically um, that you need to cover off. So making sure VPE, what are you doing to this this year? What are you looking to do differently? And how can we make sure that's visible in, in what we're doing from a financial standpoint? VPM, Vice President Membership, is the induction of new members. So making sure that they're submitting all the, uh, the, the dues and whatnot on time, getting the manual so they can hit the ground running. That's really important. Secretary, uh, they are buying materials as well. So even though we had agenda printing, the secretary sometimes can be involved in doing that, but also buying all of the ribbons, certificates, printing, we had an assumption about FX, Finance Foreign Exchange. Uh, we didn't account for that in there, but that's something you want to consider as well as part of what the secretary's doing. If they're, if they're ordering supplies from Toastmasters International, some clubs do pull together and buy things in one big bulk. If we have the uh, international convention in France this year, then you can maybe buy a lot of that, uh, a lot of that material in France if it happens. That way, it's a little bit cheaper because it's going to be. Um, uh, it's only going to be more local than actually global with uh, less shipping costs. Okay, so thinking about local and global supplies. VPN, that's all about marketing costs, advertising, social events, open houses, although we said with the open houses, actually money you can get from the district, they keep hitting on that, uh, but keep that in mind. Sergeant Arms is really the state of equipment. So what, do you need new lights? Do you need other things that actually facilitate the club? Uh, operating on a day-to-day -day basis and room hire is a big one and anything for replacement. So understanding, well, we've been running for 10, 20 years. So some clubs are running for 20 years in this district. Do we need to replace some things? Do we need a new banner? Do we need a new uh, set of lights, for example? Immediate past president. I talked about escalation points, but this, uh, this role can really be a great mentoring, uh, coaching type of role for what you're doing in financials because they know what happened last year. They may be able to provide you with perspective for this year. So they're kind of like that second or third opinion if you need them uh, and help you review. And then last but not least, this is always something that as, as a previous area director, uh, never really got asked much about financial coaching, but they're also uh, 
a really good person to talk to. I know Adam, uh, Adam was on here. I don't know if he's still on, but he's someone that you can reach out to if you've got any questions from a financial standpoint, being another escalation path. You're not getting something from your president. The area director is the next point of call, okay, being that third option. And you know, there's training options that you can use for the area director. So you can say, hey, Mr. Area Director or Mrs. Area Director, can we do some more financial training in our cot? That way they can facilitate that in the, uh, in the agenda. And last but not least is district support as well. So Violet's there, there's many people within the district that can help support. You know, it's not their first, second, third year, there's been a lot of people around to support. All right, last but not least, we're getting close to the end and I know we're getting close to seven o'clock. I also wanted to make sure that everybody understands that there is benefits of being a treasurer. I come into Toastmaster originally when I joined nearly uh, 19 years ago is to learn to be a better public speaker and leader. Um, and I've come a long, long way, but there's still things that I get out of it. And more for me is about personal growth and contribution. Now, as a treasurer, you're learning new skills as well. So don't forget that with everything you're doing, the stuff that's mundane, filling out spreadsheets, you're learning key financial skills that you can leverage within your day-to-day -day job, even managing personal budgets as well, your family budget. So don't take that away and forget about some of the skills that you're actually leveraging as a as a uh, whoops, you know what's going on there? Uh, as a uh, as a treasure within your club. So I've listed some of them out here. You get for financial exposure and experience. One of the things I'm doing personally is I'm going to look to try and be a uh, the finance manager and take over from Violet next year so I can get those additional skills and capabilities. But it's still leadership skills. It's still communication skills. You get some Excel skills as well, possibly. Um, and then I, I like adding this one in here, is finance is the backbone of everything. And you can see Violet smiling because that's, uh, that's her line. And it's true, you know, money does drive a lot of things. So it's good to be at the heart of everything that's going on in your club. Plus, you can be this, you can sell the value of being the treasurer. You know, that's really important within a club. The finances drive everything. Last but not least, there's some great technologies. Um, I, I work in technology and there's a lot that's going on around fintech. So maybe there's some fintech technologies that you can get involved with that uh, you can support your club. One of those is the iZettle. So going away from someone transferring money into your bank account, but just tapping and doing contactless payments. That's a great way of speeding or expediting the onboarding of a member. Now, I know we do it at our club. You got a member there, they're like not really sure if they're gonna join, but if you get them with an iZettle and they sign up straight away, then they hit the ground running and everybody's happy rather than giving them another two weeks and potentially at the end of that, they're like, yeah, I'm not sure if I'm gonna join. So hitting the ground running. I just wanna finish off uh, last but not least just some uh, tools and techniques and then I'll switch over to Violet. But there's a ton of material out there. One of the cool things about Toastmasters with our 300,000 plus members around the world, it's been done before. So you can search online and find a lot of great collateral and material that you can leverage in doing your day-to-day -day job or even presenting back to your club. So have a look at the Club Leadership Handbook, which outlines the role of the treasurer, like the key tasks that I mentioned before. But remember, it's bigger and better than that, uh, being a treasurer. Club Success Plan, we talked about that. There's a ton of incentives that the district uh, put together every single year, the pizza by renewing members, the, the open house. Uh, so keep those in mind. Leverage your club training. That's great if you can attend that, getting the latest and greatest of what's going on in the district. Club Central, you, I'm sure you know about that. Leveraging your committee and members, and we'll talk about the, uh, the break-even uh, fees and calculator now. So, Violet, did you want to just have a quick review of that since you're online? You're still muted, I think. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah, can hear you now. Yes. Um, yeah, I'll, I'm conscious of time, so I'll just go over it quickly. Um, the, the oh, sugar, let me, I've lost it. Can't share my screen. Let me, do you want to stop sharing so I can, sh okay, I'll share my screen so you can see. Uh, All right, can you, oh, hang on, stop sharing. There we go. How about there you go? Okay, there we go. You're welcome. Thank you. Um, can everyone see my screen? It's slowly coming up. See you later, Slayer Violet. Yeah. So the break even calculator really it's the starting point is where you know, you know, what does it cost to hire the venue per meeting. So you work out how much is it 50, you know, for example, in my example, it's 50 pounds per meeting. Then how many meetings are you going to have every year? 
So you multiply that to get your total venue cost, which is 650. Then you know how much your ribbons are. You know what your PR and marketing, how much do you intend to spend? So for example, in this example, then we know the club needs at least 850 pounds every year to run. So looking at that, how much how many members do you need and then how much are you going to be charging them so looking at this example it will be it works out as 10 pounds per month and if we're being conservative at you know at exchange rate of one one dollar 25 to the pound and then we assume toastmasters dues work out as six pounds per month so the net fees per month would be 24. So we know each member has to contribute at least 24 pounds per month. So we need six, 36 members to be able to break even. So that's the first starting point. And that's what you use to, you know, to work out how, much, how many members do you need. So if we know we need our break even point is 36, and then how many members? So you divide that. So go back. So you, you know what your, your costs are and how many members, then you factor in your variable costs as well to get to that point. So rather than choosing a random figure out of the sky, it's always, always important to start with your, you know, your fixed cost, how, you know, how much does it cost to keep the club, the club running? Obviously now, given that um, we are meeting online, so nobody knows how long this is going to last and again it's you know as tony raised the question do you refund members or do you keep that in your surplus or do you invest it back in you know into the members um has anyone got any any because uh, again the, the, you know, this is just a simple spreadsheet that's available as part of the, you know from the district but i believe you know you can just do it whichever way makes sense for you I think the other, thing, the other thing you could do with this one, Violet, is not just necessarily start with break-even points, but adjust the numbers to see where your set of members are now. So let's say yeah. you have 20 members, you can play with the costs just to get it to that point where, okay, well, this is what we really should be charging. It gives you a nice, yeah. you know, uh, I guess, validation. Exactly. exactly. And even knowing that, you know, going forward come September, how many people are likely to drop off and how many people are likely to renew. And then that also gives you an indication of should you put your fees up or not? Because if your members are going to drop off, the club still has to continue. And if you know your members have dropped off and the remaining members fees are not enough to cover your break even, then the club has no choice but to put up the fees. Then also alternatively, again, you know, you look at your surplus, do you have a little, you know, a little bit of breathing room? Can you keep the fees the same? Personally, I'm not a big fan of reducing fees as in if everything was the same, because we don't know what the future holds. So you'd rather keep the money within the club and reinvest it back rather than reduce fees because we no, nobody knows. So a pound in hand is better than a pound that you don't have. That's how I look at it. Any other questions? Anyone got any questions? Questions of the time. So sharing this. All right, so I am, um, where's my thing gone? I can't, oh, there you are. Then, do, um, do I need to go back to share? Hope oh, we have questions. Uh, so I don't have to leave. That's fine. Well, look, that's that's pretty much what we had in terms of the remaining part of the uh, session. So I wanted just to open it up. Oh, here we go. Um, just wanted to open up to see if anyone else had any questions. Or even, you know, do you want us to? Would you have liked to see anything else included that we haven't covered? What would you find more helpful? Because yeah. I'm conscious, you know, being you guys are on the ground, you know what your members face, you know what challenges you have. So what would you like to, you know, be helped with? Isabel, can you think of anything? Because obviously, 
and the amount of economic have on long term, so not current renewal from this time next year. So um, how say that um, we should more than a six buffer account at the moment, um, taking into account that um, this time next Yeah, we lost. Uh, we lost her for some reason. Lost Isabel. Oh, you back there? Oh, you muted again, Isabel. I'll unmute you. Hang on. There you go. You're unmuted. What I might do is it might be your video. So let me okay. just stop your video. Do you want to ask that question again? I'll just stop your video, um, and it might be it might be uh, easier now. Okay. Um, so it's just that. Um, my concern is that the way the economy might go in the next year or so will impact renewals in the long term. So how much, um, how long do you think we should, do you think we should have a longer buffer amount of money in the account? So like more than six months in the account when we're considering how much of either a discount at the next one or how much credit we can give for our following renewals? It, it's a hard one to answer. I mean, I'll give you my answer and then Violet, you, you can yeah. certainly follow up. It's a really tough yeah. one. What we really don't know at this point is how long this is going to to uh, to last. I think what would really be important for you is to, and this is where I go back from the difference between a treasure role and I like to coin the term like a CFO, you really do got to do that analysis to say, okay, well, look, if, if this projects out three months, what does it look like? If, it, if it's a six month thing, what does it look like? Nine and 12. I think within 12 months, we definitely will be back to normal, but I think it's going to be a slow ramp up in terms of just the economy, you know, getting back to normal. Mm. Now, how does that impact your, how does that impact your members? What kind of member demographic do you have? There's a lot of really interesting things, you know, that need to take into consideration. So unfortunately, there's no silver bullet or answer, but I think that's where you just need to work together as, as a, as a team to think about, well, I, I personally think they're talking about the next couple of weeks being peak. And then after that, what does that mean coming down? But I don't think everyone knows enough about what's going on. And so it's, it's a crazy crisis we're going through. It's, mm. it's unprecedented. Uh, so I say all that to say that do the analysis. If you've got questions, you want to bounce it off someone. Um, we're available. Feel free to, to ask us the question, ask the district the question. Um, it, it's not going to be black and white. That's definitely, mm. that's kind of my my two cents, Violet, I'll, I'll let you add, add to that. Um, yes, um, I think anything more than six months, again, it's being mindful of members, because I, I always go back to the point, it's members' money. If you're going to keep you know, money, if, if someone has paid in, because people normally pay for six months, and if the club is aiming to keep money for a year, is it fair on the member who's paid for six months, that will probably mean you're putting up their fees to cover the year's costs, is it right? Is it fair? Is it, are you being over, what's the word? Are you over conscious? Okay. Yeah. So it's point. getting that balance right as well. Yeah. Because, you know, how, how, how long will it take you to have, you know, 12 months worth of money in the bank? Is that feasible? Is it realistic? Is it fair? Would that money be used elsewhere? So it's, you know, getting the, the balance right. Okay. Thank you. Well, any other questions? I just have a quick question about the TMI website. Um, when I enter, uh, when I pay TMI for the next six months, I mean, like um, for the current uh, new membership cycle, then if a member is paid up, it, it would normally have said uh, they're paid up until September the 30th. But I noticed that because they've extended the renewal period until people, members to renew until April the 30th. So it shows on the website that they're paid up until October the 31st instead of September the 30th. Mm. Is that going to stay as um, October the 31st or are they going to put it back to uh, September 30th? Do you know? I, I didn't know about that. I, I don't know this is the answer right now. I don't know. Okay. But I do, but I having said that, I, I don't know. Could it be that they've allowed people an extra month or will they re re reverse it back? I don't know. That's something I need to find out. I don't know either. 
I, I would, in my opinion, uh, I would assume that they've changed it for this year and they'll go back to it normal next year, mm. but we don't yeah. know. <laughs> um, you will be right, Brad. It makes sense now and also makes sense in six months because people are going to still be you know, in a situation where they're just struggling potentially. So I dare say this month and they'll probably reset it next month or maybe it does something different, but yeah. No, I'm sure we'll find out. All right. Oops, we just had someone else join. Hi there. I was here before and she left and she's back. Oh, exactly. exactly. <laughs> we, we, we lost, we lost a, another, we lost the Karamaji uh, a few minutes ago. Someone had to go, so. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we got the important Karamaji on here. <laughs> All right, was there any, any other questions uh, before we stop recording? Oh yeah, please. How, how, can I see the recording? Because I know you've been recording it. How would I be able to view the recording? I'll, I'll pass that one, that question to Violet. Violet. I'll pass it back to you. <laughs> I, I know I missed the little bit. <laughs> no, um, Brad's been recording, so we'll make the recording available. I'm not sure how and which format, but it definitely will be available because we are planning to make this evergreen so that it's a resource that people can tap into. So it will definitely be available. I'm not. Sh I'm not sure of the details how, but I will definitely be in touch. I did, okay. I did say it'll go on the. It, it'll be a link to the district to website it. somehow. Yeah, yeah. Or uh, what we may end up doing, Violet. I don't know what they, we did with the previous webinars, but uh, it would make more sense just to put it up on YouTube and link it to the district yeah. website. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. We'll we'll do it one way or, or another and get it up there. But it'll be on the district website, and then I think we just get Susan, who's our PR manager, to add that to the. Um, the newsletter so keep an eye on the newsletter and we'll um we'll get it yeah up. it will be good yeah okay sorry i couldn't be there the whole meeting i was walking well it's, it's the sun is shining why yeah. outside, right? <laughs> and, and, and i just saw uh division k the whole afternoon so i had to just get away and then i forgot about this one <laughs> Oh, well, this is recorded anyway. And if you have any further questions, just feel free to reach out to, to Violet or myself. We're more yep. than happy to do that. Cool. All right. Well, why don't we, why don't we wrap this up? Um, thank you for joining. We really appreciate it. We weren't sure at five past six that uh, anyone was going to join. So we thought that the, uh, the 21 degrees outside was just too much of a, uh, too much of a winner compared to Violet and myself, but anyway, we got there. So thank you for your time. We really appreciate it. I hope you got something out of it. And again, yeah, reach out. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Brad. Thank you, Violet. Thank you, Violet. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.